Hey, so I want to get started. I want to be respectful of your time and everyone's time uh, on social media. If you're following on social media, click on your email and join us live. Or if not, drop some questions and I'll try to get to them. I'm a one man show today. Savannah has got, I think it's her daughter's fourth birthday. Legitimate reason to not be here. But Maddie, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Maddie, let me give you a quick intro. She is a co-founder and CEO of Mount, where she's on a mission to change the way we travel. She encourages travelers to go with just a backpack and rent everything they need and destination from the locals. She's rooted in short-term rentals and she's a rising star. She won uh, the Rising Star Award in 2022 and 2023. We met in Nashville, I think last year at Bill Fates conference. A uh, really amazing, inspirational story, how young she is. And uh, I don't think I was doing anything near what she was doing, but I'm gonna let her give her uh, a little intro there, uh, how she got into the business and so on and so forth. Awesome. Yeah, and Alex, if you want me to start talking about Mount too, happy to. But basically, I can introduce myself because no one really knows who I am, which is good. And Alex alluded to the fact that I am young and, and I did start my business when I was 12 years old. That is absolutely how it started. That picture of me in the black and white is actually me when I was 12. And I decided to invent a bike lock, got a patent for that, and basically started my entrepreneurial journey then. And little did I know it was going to lead me to where I am now. Studied entrepreneurship in college at Northeastern and basically took this lock idea I had and just went on a string of pivots to get to here. Went from bike locks to scooter locks. I ended up working with Bird and Lime and that entire scooter industry of chaos and really tried to figure out how that worked. Saw those companies become billion dollar companies right before our eyes. Saw it all come crashing down because of COVID and then ended up in the short term rental space simply because I had started putting scooters at various Airbnb properties to see what would happen and then realized that honestly the bigger problem within the short term rental industry is that guests are always peppering you with questions of what should I do and where should I go and the best answer is a verbal answer or maybe a message of the scooter rental company down the road. And I think there's a lot of improvement there. So that is what set me on this path of short-term rentals, experiences and travel. Raised over 4 million from out to this point and I'm now here. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't, I think I was trading baseball cards at 12 years old, not anything like that. A little minded trying to trade those and make a little bit of my inspirational, so. Well, thank you. I'd like to say Mount is a team of Gen Z or the Gen Z traveler. Along the way, well, I raised over $4 million for Mount and really am here to change. So why this pertains to you and your business? First of all, I want to look at how travel is changing. And this affects you because the way your guests are booking and what they're looking for is absolutely changing as well. In that 91% of travelers right now really do see the importance of taking ethical trips. They want to travel for a reason, for a purpose, and they don't want to fall into the classic tourist traps. On top of that, nearly 70% of travelers say that they are more likely to book an accommodation if they know that the property is planet friendly. Are you offering any sustainability measures? Are you taking any sustainable measures? And what does that look like and how are you translating that into your marketing? And does your guest or prospective guest know that? Now, on top of all these trends, really what we're looking at is that travel Travelers want more than just a place to stay. It used to be that they would book any type of property as long as the pictures looked good, the reviews checked out, and it was in the location they wanted. That's not the case anymore. People are actually starting to book their vacation based on what they want to do and what their bucket list items are. For example, let's say on your bucket list, you want to go see the Northern Lights in Iceland. Now, sorry, just even, even the Northern Lights. You have what you want to do. Now you need to find where you want to go. Iceland being a great example. I'm from New York. Iceland's not too far. I'm like, oh, it'll be a great adventure. You have your first two things, what you want to do, where you want to go. Now you find the place to stay that's going to help facilitate what you want to do. So when I was searching for all this, because I actually did go to Iceland to see the Northern Lights, I was Googling places, hey, see the Northern Lights on our property. Stay here and I'll help you see the Northern Lights all that amazing stuff and that's how I found my place. So the top of funnel is totally changing on how people end up at your listing and end up booking, which proves that the way travelers are searching for accommodations is changing. It absolutely starts with what they want to do and it ends with where they're staying. Maybe their flights are even last. Now, why this is so important to you is because right now, 83% of travelers are actively seeking out and paying for these experiences, this experiential travel. They are absolutely paying for it to the tune of a lot of money. But right now, less than 10% of hosts are offering these bookable experiences. When your guests ask you what to do and where to go, how often are you just giving them recommendations and you're not making any money from that. I'd argue it's pretty high. So what this looks like is there's $9.2 billion being left on this table that you guys are just not accessing that is absolutely being transacted. So why shouldn't you get a piece of that pie if you're the ones giving the recommendation? We have not believed you should. That's exactly why we exist. We want you to be able to offer these experiences directly to your guests through a bookable experiences, and this is how you get there. So when you're looking at setting up your experiences, it's not just looking at, okay, what can I offer and throwing that all at your guests. You really have to know your guests and why they're coming to your property. Then you can offer them very tailored to recommendations, and that ensures they're gonna book with you. Next, you're gonna to put together the experiences. I know that sounds daunting, but I'm going to give you some really easy ways so it's not. And then obviously we're going to look at some software to automate this because we don't like working harder. We work a lot smarter here. So when it comes to knowing your guests, you actually probably have some great historical data you can pull from. What is the average age of your guests? Are they traveling with a group? Are they traveling with a significant other? And then why are they traveling? What questions are you constantly getting asked and what are you constantly recommending? Is it a bike shop down the road? Is it a foodie experience downtown? Is it skiing and snowboarding? Look in 
dreams of what you are actually currently offering. And that's how you start putting together your experience. Instead of word of mouth experiences, what Mount does is we bring all of those vendors, these local businesses online from your recommendation. You do have to let us know who you want to bring online. We bring them online quickly, and then you can start offering all of those experiences directly to your guests. Let's say you have a vendor that does a brewery tour. We can bring them online, make them bookable. So when your guests ask, you can with one link, and now they can book everything they need. It could be a romance package, e-bikes, surfboard, golf carts, experiences with local businesses, like whatever you want to offer, you can do that, and you should be doing that for your guests. Now, you are going to need a software that takes payments, that helps with marketing, and then is like an online booking fulfillment. So basically, when your guests see what they want to do, there's a book button, there's a calendar, and then there's a payment processor as well. That's exactly what Mount does. So we process and do all of that for you. Now, one thing, great Boostly shout out here, is that by doing these experiences, you better believe it will absolutely enhance the SEO of your direct booking website. If someone is searching Northern Lights in Iceland, your property should be coming up because you've tailored it to offer that Northern Lights experience. That's now why guests are booking with you. And that's actually how they're finding you. So you need to highlight your experiences on your direct booking website. You should be writing blogs, highlighting your experiences, tagging your direct booking website, because that will also come up in searches. You need to call out your experiences in your listing title, in your photos, videos, and really just start marketing and branding your property as the destination for this experience, not just a place to stay. Once you've done all that, you should absolutely see a lot more direct bookings. You will see a lot more amazing guests coming through you and you'll be making money commission revenue off of selling these experiences. So if you want to learn more, go ahead and scan that QR code. Happy to chat with you, reach out, find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, and we'll help you get your experiences set up anywhere in the world, by the way. Pretty cool. Mount, it's really, you're just the middleman. Am, am I right on that? Your guest is going to come to your property and book these experiences, whether it's you're involved with it or not. Exactly. Yeah. Might as well be involved. But you're like the, like when I go to cruise ships and someone wants to book an excursion, they're going to book with them. Yeah, I'd, I'd equate it to a concierge, but it's digital and requires no effort other than the setup time. So like I've set mine up and I just don't know how to go about getting that to the the one thing I have is a QR code and I said, hey, you know what, scan this QR code and I just have a title that says, book your Gulf Shores experiences, paddleboard, sunset cruises, whatnot. Yes. Okay. Is your QR code in the property? It is at the property. Yeah. So I'd say that's, that's great. Like a lot of hosts don't actually do that piece of it. We are ahead of the crowd there. And then I think too, the thing to understand when you're selling experiences and just really trying to give your guests a better experience than just a place to stay is that they'll have in mind what they want to do, but in reality, they're not going to book it until they've settled in at your property, they've confirmed they made their flights, they've checked in, and once they've gotten all of that stress and anxiety relieved, they're like, all right, I'm here. Now I'm going to think about getting everything ready for what I want to do the next few days. And our data shows that's like actually what happens. Knowing that you have your QR code in the property, that's great, but I'd also via your automation in your PMS or messaging tool or whatever it may be, set up a few automated messages where it's like, hey, I'm glad you got checked in. If you're thinking about what to do, here's my personalized list of recommendations and put your link there. Yeah. So then they'll hit there and then maybe do that again two days in just in case they missed that text or email. We typically recommend text and then it's top of mind for them and you should see a higher conversion that way. Is there a way to, and I'm sure you're a newer company here and I'm sure you're like still developing a lot of stuff, but what I was thinking was have crafted messages if they are there for two days versus three days versus is four days so on and so forth oh that's cool yeah because the one thing I was thinking was we signed up and it's there's 12 different experiences or whatever, but I think you almost need to tailor it down a little bit more depending on how many days that they're going to be there. And maybe they like seeing all of that stuff too, but I was thinking like with the PMS, hey, there's here's a list of, you only have 48 hours in Gulf Shores, Alabama, here's what I would do. Yeah, absolutely. I should preface with the fact that we don't typically do PMS integrations just because it is built to stand alone. But if you can get crafty within your PMS, because your PMS knows like how many days that guest is staying, is there a way to use the messaging tool there to craft messages where if my guest is staying two days, send this message. Because at the end of the day, the mount link doesn't change to make it easy on all of you guys. But if you can get gamified a little and be like, okay, I know this guest is staying two days or you're that, send this message. I, to be honest, don't know how well built your PMS is. So I don't know if that's possible, but I would push back a little there on them. And you're paying a lot for that software. So you might as well get all you can out of it. Yeah, there's some of them are very customizable. Um, what are some of the services that people can book with Mount? So I'd say very, so at Mount, we like to be as hyper local as possible. So you'll see if you sign up for an account and Alex, I don't know if you saw this as well. When you put in Gulf Shores, for example, we were in that market. So it populated with the 12 
however many vendors we're already working with. Mm -hmm. But really what we like is for you guys to click the refer button and put in your wish list or dream list of who you think we should be working with. Because technically, in most cases, you are the local. To be fair, I've never been to Gulf Shores, so I couldn't tell you what there is to do. Mm -hmm. But if the recommendation of who we should be working with comes from you guys, all we need is basically their name and or email, phone numbers, key indicator as who they are. And yeah. then we reach out on your guys' behalf, being like, hey, you should get into Mount so you can be sold within these Airbnb properties, win for everyone involved. And that way, what we're putting into the marketplace is something you consider hyper-local. So therefore we do as well. A hidden gem, your guest probably won't find it anywhere else. And that's what we really like to build out is whatever you think your guest wants, we want that in the marketplace. We just need to understand who it is really that does it. How do you guys vet the vendor? Cause like guests, I'm gonna let you guys know if you guys are watching out there, sometimes guests suck and they're gonna complain about stuff that you have no control over. A guest complained about the, the beach water being cold. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, You're like, that was in my control. <laughs> let me go over there and heat that up for you right now. 2000 miles away. But that is something that I guess I would worry about. Am I getting in trouble or something if, if I'm, I'm sending a guest to someone who's awful or whatever? Great question. So the way we typically like to vet vendors is just, I think first pass is like, how long have you been in business? Because typically they are ma and pa, pen and paper operators. Like the good ones have been in business for a long time mm -hmm. and they are just not online yet. Right. An antiquated industry right now, this experience world. Right. So that's a really great indicator. And that's really who we like to bring on the platform is we want this true tourism industry that is local. So that's the first pass. Also, second pass, are you a local? Did you just set up shop here to really capitalize on tourism? Or are you here because you love this market? And then because we are contracting with the vendors, we're interacting with them at some level, like we like to build that relationship. So that's just another kind of way that we vet stuff. And then the final way is reviews. I think that's how most marketplaces end up doing it at scale is let's have the traveler review that vendor, vendor review the traveler, keep it honest that way. And if there's some red flags popping up in the reviews, then we'll take them off the platform. But at the end of the day for a vendor, what Mount has built is such a unique marketing channel that they are held to a higher standard because we can choose anyone in that industry. And let's say there's five bike rental shops in the market, we're going to choose the best one. So if you're not offering a high quality service, you're going to get replaced. Yeah, I absolutely love this idea because I think it seems like a no brainer to do. Like it's free to set up an account, right, Maddie? Correct. Yes. It's free to set up an account. I've been preaching to everyone to just set up a QR code, a dynamic one, where you can easily just put that in there. Hopefully, like right now, people are scanning my QR code to get the Wi-Fi password. And then oh. to get the Wi-Fi password, they see, I just moved it up to, hey, this makes sense. Cause I have all these digital like top five hikes to do and stuff like that, but I'm like, Hey, I want to get paid off this stuff. I want to make a little bit of money if I'm being a guide. So that leads me to another question. What are the potential revenue that some uh, a host could generate uh, using Mount or partnering with them? Yeah, I see another good question. I'd say revenue is very dependent and it takes, I will be honest, it takes a little while to get to a place where you are seeing constant revenue. And it's because you really have to figure out what your what type of experience your guest avatar and profile really wants. Great example of this is we had a property manager in Chicago fill their marketplace with very high end experiences. So I'd say a few hundred dollars per person and they saw zero sales. Now when they shifted all the experiences out to have a ticket dollar price around 40, 50 person, they saw sales drastically increase. And I think it's because they really understood that their guest profile was someone that only wanted to spend, like they were a bit more price sensitive. So I will spend 40, $50 a person. We're traveling with four people. doesn't make sense to total a thousand dollars on an experience when I could spend hundred. So there is some trial and error, which is why you'll see when you're building your marketplace, there's a swap function and it really allows you to do that on the fly. You can log onto your phone at any point and swap experiences in and out in real time. You should be playing around with it. And if you don't see a lot of bookings, swap them in and out because there's a chance that maybe your guest avatar and the guests that are showing up just aren't seeing exactly what they want. Is there a way to track what people are clicking on or anything like that? There is. Right now, uh, reach out to us and we'll send you metric reports. Mm -hmm. But yes, that feature is coming. So like we love hearing from you guys on what you want, that being one of them, obviously. That way you can see what's most best performing and stuff like that. And I think in the future too, you'll be able to see just across your market in Gulf Shores, for example, if there's other hosts using Mount, like what for them is the most popular experience? How much money are they making compared to you? Like really see a lot of that market data to understand what is tourism like in Gulf Shores? What are people spending their money on? And how can you better tap into that? Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It's just like, I, I just closed on a property in Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, and another good market, yeah. Yeah, there's tons of breweries. And the thing is, I don't drink, but the, a lot of people do, right? And there's tons of brewery tours. And I, I definitely want 
want to start suggesting those, but I'm like, what does well, what doesn't, or do I send them to a specific brewery or a specific experience? And then I, I want to like A-B test some of that. Yeah, absolutely. And if you end up having a few properties in Asheville, because Mount is free, you could create two Asheville marketplaces, mm -hmm. fill them with different experiences and A-B test that way as well. And maybe one does really well and the other is a flop and you found out, okay, this one works better. <laughs> yeah. If one is geared more towards families and one's geared towards maybe couples that are coming to Asheville, maybe having two different guidebooks there. Yeah, honestly, it's, I've never had that idea until right now. So thank you, Alex. But <laughs> that's a great way to do it is in Asheville, we're really building that market right now. So hopefully in a month or two, we'll have 30 to 40 vendors we're working with. And I would say, yeah, build out. We only allow 12 in a mini marketplace. So build out different marketplaces geared to different types of travelers. Show them all, but just be like, hey, this is my list if you're traveling with a family. This is my list if you're traveling with a group of your friends. And that way they could get exactly what they want. And you're showing different experiences per marketplace. That's some of the best practices that you would have when someone is setting up their account with Mount and trying to curate that experience for the guests, what would you say? Yeah, absolutely. Chances are when you're setting up your market, it will be a new market for Mount, just given density and just many places in the US or abroad. So I would just say, don't be afraid to really think, who would you want to work with? Who's your local business, your local Rolodex? And, and input that as a referral, because we can get it set up in about a week. It's pretty quick. And then you're up and running. And then I would say, even if we do have density, like Asheville's a great example, we have some vendors there. But if, for example, you're like, I really want to try working with this vendor, refer them and we'll get them online and see how it goes. So I think it's all about collaboration and building this community at the end of the day. And if you're promoting your local community and your local businesses, it's going to bring a lot more goodwill to you than just revenue especially when people are tightening on regulations, you can hit them back and be like, actually, we're driving this amount of local business, especially mm -hmm. when you start with the metrics behind that. Wow, uh, point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so I think there are a lot more applications than just an extra few hundred dollars a month. It's like, no, actually, you're driving local tourism and, and you have the proof to back it up. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like I got to go out there and do a little bit more market research and eat at places, unfortunately, but that's all good for me. Alex, what we've had other hosts do. So if, like for, for you that just acquired a property in Asheville and maybe you don't know Asheville as well as a local, we've had other hosts who reach out to like just someone who's lived there for a while hey who should be brought into mount and they build the market together alongside someone who's lived there for years so that's another way to do it as well okay cool so how do hosts get paid then let's say someone books through i don't know local mom and pop restaurant or something like that or um, a cruise ship or whatever does the cruise ship actually send you like a percentage or is there a little bit of kickback or does that come from mount what does that process look like yeah so we when we contract with all these business we call them curators so when we contract with the curators we are negotiating for about 20 percent of the commission and then we split that 50-50 with you guys. So if you're selling experiences, you'll get 10% from what you sell. Wow. To me, Maddie, I think it's an amazing product because it's such a no-brainer for you to do. You just have to find a way to get guests to book that experience. And they're booking it anyway, right? They're <laughs> coming to the pro to Gulf Shores or Asheville every single time. And they're like, we already go straight to that vendor. But you're right. There's probably a large percentage that don't really know where they're going to book or what they're going to do unless you as a host say, hey, maybe you should check this local thing out. And the word local is like what we do in our QR codes, we have these plaques. I, I tend to put top five hikes to do in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. And then I have a QR code and the QR code really is just gearing them to the book direct or leave a review or do something else. But now we have Mount in that QR code. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So Mount sounds really interesting. Any like parting words there or any anything else you want to say about Mount? I don't think so. Honestly, yeah. Just like encouraging people to try the product out, give us feedback and hopefully we can grow this kind of local movement together. Okay. Maddie, how can people get a hold of you? Dot com. That's our website. I would say that's number one. And then I'm very active on LinkedIn as well. So if you want to give myself or Mount a follow there, like we're posting updates constantly about the product, the markets, all of it. So it's a good way to stay involved. Cool. Hey, sign up, rent Mount. It seems like a no brainer to me and be a good post and suggest different experiences for your guests. And I think those five-star reviews will come and you'll make a little bit of money on the side too. Hey, Maddie, thanks for uh, coming on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, Alex. Thanks. Thanks guys.